What's going on guys? Back again for another book review. Okay, this book right here, listen closely. It's very, very powerful. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this. If not, definitely jot this down. Think and Grow Rich. Incredible book. I read this about a couple years ago and then I just read it. I finished it up about three days ago. And I'm actually reading the law of success right now, which is like the Bible of personal development. But for those of you who are aware, this book is one of the most powerful books in the self-help industry. And basically, you know, I'm going to go over just the ins and outs of, you know, some of my biggest takeaways. And as always, you know, I normally read the cover, the back, and then I pick out, I read this as well. And then I pick out a chapter in the book. Actually, not a chapter, but... I read the chapters and then the page I pick randomly, okay? So the title, Think and Grow Rich, the landmark bestseller now revised and updated for the 21st century. So there is an old copy, uh, this is by Napoleon Hill, okay? So the best-selling success book of all time now revised and updated for life in the 21st century. Every chapter of this book mentions the money-making secret that has made fortunes for more than 500 exceedingly wealthy people whom I have carefully analyzed over a long period of years. The book contains the secret, which has been put to, a, put to a practical test by thousands of people from almost every walk of life. The secret to which I refer has been mentioned no fewer than a hundred times throughout the book. It has not been directly named for it seems to work more successfully when it is merely uncovered and left in sight where those who are ready and searching for it may pick it up. If you are ready, to put it to you, she will recognize this secret at least once in every chapter. I wish I could tell you how you would know if you were ready, but that would deprive you of much of the benefit you will receive when you make the discovery in your own way. And this is by Napoleon Hill himself who wrote this. So in your hands is the essential guide to joining the ranks of the world's most successful people. Think and Grow Rich is a seminal work by the well-loved and world-renowned uh, Napoleon Hill, a contemporary of Dale Carnegie. Originally published in 1937, Hill's money-making secrets are as powerful today as they were then and can change your life forever. After interviewing more than 500 of the most affluent men and women of his time, Hill uncovered the secret to great wealth based on the notion that if we can learn to think like the rich, we can discover wealth and success. He developed a simple but powerful 13-step formula to help you to identify your goals, master the secret of true and lasting success, Obtain whatever you want in your life. Join the ranks of the super successful. In the original Think and Grow Rich, Hill tells stories of Andrew Carnegie, Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, and other millionaires of his generation to illustrate his principles. In the updated version, Arthur R. Pell, PhD, a nationally known author, lecturer, and consultant in human resources management and an expert in applying Hill's philosophy, interweaves and it antidotes of how contemporary millionaires and billionaires such as Bill Gates, Mary Kay Ash, Dave Thomas, and Sir John Templeton achieved their wealth, each of them exemplifying one of Hill's key concepts. The first book to ask, what makes a winner? Is a treasure awaiting for all who are new to it or those wanting to revisit its timeless wisdom? Napoleon Hill was born in Virginia in uh, 1883 and died in 1970. After a long and successful career as a consultant to business leaders, a lecturer, and an author, Think and Grow Rich is the all-time bestseller in its field, having sold 15 million copies worldwide and setting the standard for today's motivational thinking. Yeah, as I mentioned, this is a very, very deep book, okay? I'm going to go over some of the chapters with you guys. So, chapter one, the power of thought. Two, the desire. The starting point of all achievement. And you have faith, visualizing and believing in the attainment of desire. Auto suggestion, the medium for influencing the subconscious mind. Specialized knowledge, personal experiences or observations. Imagination, the workshop of the mind. Organized planning, the crystallization of desire into action. Decision, the mastery of procrastination. Persistence, the sustained effort necessary to induce faith. Power of the mastermind, the driving force. The mystery of sex transmutation. 
the subconscious mind, the connecting link, the brain, a broadcasting and receiving station for thought, the sixth sense, the door to the temple wisdom, how to outwit the six ghosts of fear in the devil's workshop is the last chapter. Okay. So as always, what I normally do here, I'm going to pick a page, whatever I feel called to. So I'm just telling me to go towards the back of it. You got a page. Okay. I'm not going to read the whole page. I'm just going to read the, the, the paragraphs. This is the page that I turned to. Page 200. So if you have the book, you want to go with me. Okay, page 200. This is the new version. This is not a course on religion. No fundamental principle described in this book should be interpreted as being intended to interfere either directly or indirectly with anyone's religious habits. This book has been confined exclusively to instructing the reader how to transmute the definite purpose of desire for money into its monetary equivalent. Read, think, and meditate as you read. Soon the entire subject will unfold and you will see it in perspective. You are now seeing the detail of the individual chapters. Money is shy and elusive. It must be wooed and won by methods not unlike those used by a determined lover in pursuit of a mate. And coincidental as it is, the power used in the wooing of money is not greatly different from that used in the wooing of lover. That power, when successfully used in the pursuit of money, must be mixed with faith. It must be mixed with desire. It must be mixed with persistence. It must be applied through a plan, and the plan must be set into action. I read this last part. Some of the best sources for creating your own mastermind group are your employees. Andrew Grove, the extremely successful CEO of Intel Corporation, did this. Grove works with a team of technical, marketing, financial, and administrative men and women in an informal environment. There are no private offices, special parking spaces, or other privileges for executives. Employees have a generous stock option plan so they can share in the gains if the company makes money in stock rises, in the stock rises. Although the team may appear casual, they follow Grove's lead of being very demanding on themselves. When Intel faced a crisis in 1976, the team willingly put in extra effort. Again, they put in extra effort, more work hours, and did everything was necessary to solve the problems. On another occasion, it was discovered that the Intel uh, Pentium chip had a minor defect that would affect only an insignificant number of operations. Grove's decision, to replace its ships at a cost of $475 million rather than deliver a product that was not perfect was fully endorsed by his colleagues. Grove encourages his people to work in small autonomous work units in which everyone understands the system and the role in it. Each person contributes their knowledge, expertise, and creativity. Team members are trained and motivated to produce to the best of their capacity. When crisis arrives, the team willingly puts in the extra time, energy, and brain power to meet and beat the problems faced. So guys, this book right here, as you can tell with what I just read. Wow. You know, I read this two years ago and I was, actually it might have been three years ago, maybe longer. I remember I read this whenever I was like 19 or 20 and I'm 23 now, so it's like three or four years. And at the time, whenever I read this the first time, I just, the stuff didn't even make sense to me. I was reading it and it was so deep. I told myself, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm reading. You know, it's one of those books that you read where for the first time, I just didn't understand the concepts. But a buddy of mine, Travis Wolf, he told me, he said, Nate, you should really read Thinking Grow Rich Again. And I'm like, I'll do it. You know, I accept, you know, things from people whenever they recommend stuff to me. And I read it, I read this in, a, I'd, I'd say, less than a week again. And I, I didn't just read it like I did the first time. I, I didn't read it just in my head. I read it out loud. I read this book word for word out loud. I didn't skim through it, okay? There's some, there's some books that you can skim. This is a book you do not want to skim because this is such a powerful tool that you can use to actually, like, I literally mean this. This can literally change your entire life. But you got to apply what is mentioned in this. 
I'm over here doing podcasts now, mentioning these, mentioning these principles. And the people that I'm interviewing, they're just f- uh, floored with what I'm saying. And it's all from this book, Think and Grow Rich. So again, guys, check it out. I recommend it. I will uh, attach the link below just for you to, to cop it. It's, it's on Amazon. And this one was $10. $10? Are you kidding me? $10 for this. I would pay a million dollars for this book. That's how powerful it is. Check it out. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill.